So today, I'm gonna be wearing a black shirt to celebrate Elizabeth Holmes going to prison, and I'm also going to be fixing a MacBook. Many of you may wonder why there's been less board repair videos, where is my focus nowadays, and a lot of my focus has been on a project called Repair.Wiki, where rather than me have, you know, just have me doing videos of repairs, I'd like to have them documented in a manner where it's a little bit easier to find solutions if you're somebody who doesn't have the time to watch a one or two hour long repair video. And you'll see that we've got a lot of really, really long troubleshooting guides and techniques over here. And this stuff is also incredibly, incredibly well detailed. A lot of what you see here came from TCRS Circuit, who you can find on YouTube over, here we go, over here. This is uh, TCRS Circuit's YouTube channel. Also, we've had contributions from legends like Jesse Cruz at VCC Board Repairs, and I am happy, humbled, and honored to continue finding people who are open to contributing to this because I think that this is going to help people a lot more than my videos. And admittedly, I'm going to be honest with you, I've done over 600 board repair videos at this point. I'm kind of tired of doing the same thing over and over again. Can I be real with you? I have over 600 videos in the exact same format. Yes, count them, over 600. And that's not including live streams. There's about 100 or 200 live streams that I never managed to make into a video that are about three to five hours long that are unlisted that I just didn't really have great content in them. So overall, there's probably about 800 total board repair videos. I just don't want to keep doing the same thing over and over again. So I'm focusing on this. And I genuinely appreciate those who have uh, seen and kind of understood my vision and wanting to, wanted to contribute to it. Thank you very much for choosing to do so. So we are going to get started on this board repair today. It looks like here we have an A1466 in front of us. Let's see if we get the Paul Daniels software to work today. Okay, do we got the Paul Daniels software working today? Let's see. Do we have the, okay, we got 50% of the Paul Daniels software working today. I'll settle for 50%. And the rest is going to be the power supply. And there we go. We got 100% of the Paul Daniels software working today. All right. So I'm getting, I'm getting greedy, baby. I'm getting greedy. So let's take this board out of the case. As you can see, whoever was working on this is an evil, evil, evil person and decided to not take the DC inboard out of the case in spite of the fact that the board is taken out of the case, making it a pain in the ass to test where you have to kind of like balance it and we look, ah, this is, it's so awful. It's so awful. I swear, the people that do that should get eaten by alligators. So what we're going to do over here is just put this over here, make it, get the DC inboard out of the case like a civilized human being would do. And this should make it easier for us to do our troubleshooting. I'm also going to unscrew the SSD because I don't want the SSD, if I'm going to be doing any hot air rework or anything like that, to be getting heat while I'm working. Again, this is unavoidable when you're working on newer MacBooks because the SSD is soldered into the freaking board. But on the old ones, I would always take these precautions when I'm able to. So we're going to move this aside. We're just going to put this into my little shelf over here. Plug this in. You guys excited? Hope you guys are excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. If I'm excited, you should be excited. That's how this works. And we're gonna one, two, three. Eh. This DC inboard also has some schmutz on it. Ugh. Okay, come on. There we go. There we go. Okay, what happens? What happens? Do we get it? We have a fan spin. This already works. <laughs> okay, let's look over this into the microscope, and what do we get? By the way, everybody, uh, our friend Paul Daniels is in the chat. Say hi. He's responsible for the multimeter power supply software and board view software that I use, and he is a good man. Even if he killed Chlordite, he's a good man. He did good things for society. Okay, so it looks like there was corrosion over here at one point, so it is believable that this wasn't turning on before, or perhaps having intermittent issues for the customer, so. This is why it's important to still look. We'll take a note of what that was. We'll take a note and come back to it in a moment. So this did have liquid damage. There is a credible reason for this laptop being here. 
and it is dusty. That'll get cleaned off in the ultrasonic, no problem. All right, let's give it a quick little look-see around here. And... All right. Well, okay, let's figure out what this thing does over there. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to have to open a piece of software called Flex Board View. So that's going to be interesting. So I am going to go to my schematics folder, and I'm going to find the 820-3437 board view and schematic. And I'm going to open this file with a program called Flex Board View. Um, one thing that I'm happy about is that I'm not using Unity Desktop today. I'm actually using proper software. I'm using XFCE, which allows me to choose what program I use to open a file. And it actually allows me to set a path, not just use installed applications, which will allow me to set the file associations that I need. And beautiful, it just worked. I love XFCE. XFCE is such a beautiful desktop interface. I love this desktop interface. I love the people who program for this desktop interface. I just, I, I love the philosophy behind it. It's a beautiful stuff. It really is. And I'm grateful that there are people out there that will develop for things like XFCE. And here we go. So we're just going to find our chip. Now, this is a part that a lot of newbies have trouble with when I say, you know, I, I point to this and they're like, okay, how do I find it on here? And it's, it's just kind of like trying to find your way around a big city. And I think that that's the best way to explain it. So you just have, you know, different things everywhere. So over here, I'm looking for a three-legged thingy. So this is a, th no, a six-legged thingy with vertical that's next to an eight-legged thingamajiggy over here. So a six-legged thingy that's next to an eight-legged thingy that is a thinner rectangle. And then I look on the board view and you got the six-legged thingy that's next to this eight-legged thingy that's a thinner rectangle. So I can safely say at that point that what's corroded is Q1920. So this is the ME disable strap. So there's a management engine. Uh, it's, you know, Intel ME management engine. Uh, this is the disable strap for that. SPI descriptor override. So this is going to have to do with the ME region, BIOS, all that kind of stuff. So it says, if low, ME functions normally. If high, ME is disabled. This allows for full reflashing of SPI ROM, SMC control strap, enabled to allow infield control of strap setting. And again, at the end of the day, do you really have to understand what all this means? Not really. You don't. What you need to understand is that there's a pile of green corrosion on something and that the customer said that it's not working. And this is, a, you know, a misconception that uh, occurs very often in this industry. It's that you actually need to be smart enough to understand everything that you see on the screen in order to actually make something work again for a customer, and that is not the case. If that were the case, I wouldn't be in this business because I'm not very smart. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty stupid. I don't really have much of a working brain, and that should be obvious to anybody who watches this channel on a regular basis. Yet even an idiot like me is able to have a decently rated business on Yelp and Google and Facebook and all that jazz, and a lot of it comes down to, you know, you see something corroded, you replace something corroded, which is pretty idiot proof. Yeah, that, I mean, that, that's pretty idiot proof, I'd say. So I get myself a little donor board, and good luck with that, pseudo memes. If I knew, I would do it, because I have a, I have an S10E, and I'd love to get one. Okay, so, again, all, now, all this dust, it actually winds up trapping in little bits of corrosion and stuff like that. And it, all of that dust is going to go away in the ultrasonic cleaner. We'll make the ultrasonic cleaner water dirty, but, you know, that's why you get more water. Also note that we have a probe point over here that's on its last legs. That's most definitely going to have to be investigated as well. I'll turn up the light so that you can see that. And, yeah, you can see that I can't just put another chip on here because of what this looks like. That's not going to go very well. So, now, as I've said, you cannot solder on top of corrosion, nor should you solder on top of corrosion. So what I'd like to do here is I'd like to add a little bit of flux. And then, what I'd like to do is I'm going to scrape. And, you, and honestly, it's probably bad to scrape at the iron. I'm not saying that it's a bad tech tactic, like you're going to break the board. Or I'm saying it's bad because you're going to wind up going through these $50 tips much faster if you do this. Uh, so I'm really, really, really gently scraping. And as you can see, that probe point came off. 
which means that it's, it's, again, it's a good thing that that happened because if that didn't come off now, it most certainly would have died later after I give the device back to the customer and then it would have been intermittently turning on and turning off because it intermittently would have been conducting electricity. So I am happy when things like this happen. I am happy that if the pad comes oh, off so now. Nice. Oh my God, that was loud. Holy crap. Stock XFCE needs Windows Snap. Super key plus direction key. I have no idea what a super key is. I have no idea what a super key is. Thank you for the $1 anonymous though. Yeah, I don't know what a super key is. I have a Windows key. I have a control key, I have an alt key, I have a bunch of letters and numbers, and every now and then I'll use some punctuation. I don't know what a super key is. Yeah, I just deafened you all. I just deafened everybody, didn't I? Oh well. So. I had it turned up from before. <laughs> okay, now. As you can see, I've restored this over here, so that this, again, I did not put the solder on top of corrosion. I scraped to get rid of it, and with the flux that I added, the flux that's in the solder and the solder blob, all that corroded crap kind of got sucked up onto my iron, and then I scraped the solder off of my iron so it was no longer there, and then I soldered on top. Now the same is true here. Again, do we have something we can solder to here or not? I don't know yet. I am going to scrape. Again, I'm not going to try to solder on top of corrosion. I'm just going to provide some very gentle scraping. Some very gentle scraping to see if we still have a pathway here. That's what I'm looking for. Again, do we have a pathway here? Do we have a pathway here? Survey says... Kinda, sorta, maybe. Let's see if I can get that a little bit more in view for you. We're just going to adjust the exposure and the white balance here. I might turn down HDR because it's going to make things a little too bright. And this is a really, really basic repair. There's nothing crazy difficult here. This is a easy breezy. Easy breezy. So you see that there's some spots in there that's kind of spotty. I want to see what it looks like under all that. So I'm just going to grab my desoldering wick and I want to see what's under that. Now the other nice thing about wick is that wick is pretty decent at actually scraping away corrosion because wick is, you know, this kind of harsh abrasive wire. So it'll allow me to see if there's actual corrosion hiding under there. And as you can see, it really looks like I don't have any corrosion there anymore. So I, that, that corrosion would have eventually eaten away at this. And what I'm actually going to do over here is I'm going to run a wire from here to here just in case that's been weakened, just in case that's been weakened so that I know this is never going to come back for the same issue. Again, this may come back because they break something else, but it's not going to come back because, uh, because this was not addressed properly the first time. So let's make sure that this is nicely soldered in there. Each pad. All right. Yoink. Yoink. This. Thank you, Mansatagima. Okay. And just reinforce it. There's no pain or reinforcing it a little bit. Not much cost here. Get out of here. Shoot. Huh? Now I'm going to tin the wire, scrape away the... It's easier when you have steadier hands, but such is life. I chose the wrong profession. You don't want to make it too long, because if you make it too long, it winds up being an antenna. You don't want to... Uh, so, there we go. Now, one thing you'll notice is that if you believe that that wire is not in the proper place, it's actually going to flow in a place perfectly due to a concept called surface tension. It's going to flow naturally into the perfect part for it to be in, in relation to, this, to the solder pile there. 
What do you enjoy more, pairing boards or running a board repair business? I would say the business part of it. I mean, you can't really you can't really cut one out from the other. It's impossible to cut one out from the other, but I would say I enjoy the business part of it. You know, and run just fixing a board in and of itself eventually would get old. Being able to see the customer interaction on the front end, being able to see you know what it's like when they bring it in, what it's like when they get it back, um, you know, building it and all that. I think like it was the entirety of the experience that made it interesting for me. And what oh. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> the chip flew away. How dare you! Get back here! Okay, where'd you go, you little mother? F where'd you go? You're over here, aren't you? Okay, now I gotta figure out which way it goes. Which way is up, as Barry White would say. Do I have a dot? Okay, I got a dot, and it's the upper right corner. That's up. Which way is up is one of my favorite Barry White songs. That and get up. Which way is up and get up? You better get up. You better get up. You better get up. Get up off your ass. All right. Now that wire has flown to place, flown exactly where it should be. Beautiful. Ads are nicely soldered. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. All right, and my little probe point that was mildly corroded before has been fixed. Again, this is not really some sort of fun... Again, this, this isn't really some crazy investigative repair. We're going over and finding out this crazy problem. This was a really, really basic one, and it was honestly kind of boring because, as I said, this thing was already turning on. The ticket said it wasn't turning on. It's understandable why it wasn't turning on, because it had that corrosion over there. But, you know. Not everything is going to be crazy, crazy investigative. And you can tell that we're starting to get some weird little green probe points over here. So I'm just going to probe around a little bit on that side of the board once I find out where my alcohol dispenser is gone. What's going on over here? What's going on over here? Is that corrosion or something else altogether? Hmm. Yeah, a lot of this board is just funny, funnily colored probe points. And you got a little crumb over there. And lots of strangely colored probe points over here. I'm very curious the climate that this customer lives in. It's amazing how the smallest corrosion spot can ruin a board. Well, uh, you know, that is what it is. Oh, I'm glad you got your flux, Felix. Sorry we sent you the wrong thing the first time. Uh, my apologies. Let's see what we have here. This? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied that we've gotten rid of all the corrosion on this. So that's about that. I mean, it's, you know, not rocket science. You just... Uh, as Mark would say at iPad Rehab, I see broken, I fix broken. Sometimes the, you don't, again, you don't really need to understand the complexities of everything that you see on the screen to make something work again. Sometimes all you need is the willingness to open it up, be a little curious, follow some basic common sense, and, uh, you know, take something that looks like crap, make it not look like crap, and sometimes that's enough to get a working circuit. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. By now. And if you're able to contribute to Repair.Wiki, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you.